The zombies mode in Black Ops 6 is so addicting and so fun that it's literally the only reason why I play this game. Now in terms of other Call of Duty zombies, this one's got a few tricks, a few different things to learn and understand. So when you first get into the game, you're going to be a little confused. In this video, I'm going to go over some basic information as well as some tips and tricks to help new players and even players who have been playing since launch have a better time playing this game mode. Before I continue, I'd like to ask guys to please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful and to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any new videos. And make sure to watch the whole video because I guarantee you there's at least two things here that you had no idea existed or that you could do. But with that being said, let's get right into it. Now before you get into zombies, you can actually make a loadout. This loadout allows you to bring any gun that you have unlocked into spawn. Like right when you spawn into the zombies map, you can use this weapon along with the attachments that you've selected. You also get to choose your melee weapon, your field upgrade, your tactical and lethals, as well as your gobble gum packs. Now starting off with the gun, there are a lot of great guns to use, but I'm going to go over the attachments first as to what you should have on every single gun. Now firstly, a suppressor, this is a necessity. This is something you should always have on every single gun. Now the reason why is because every time you kill an enemy, there's an increased chance of getting salvage. I'll talk about more what salvage is, but for now I'll just say that it is very important and very useful. So make sure any weapon that you're bringing into the map has a suppressor on it. Now next up is the CHF barrel. Now, I honestly wouldn't really recommend using this thing. It does say a headshot multiplier, but it's not really a multiplier. It doesn't really multiply by two, the damage. But it does increase the damage for when you hit the zombies in the head. Now, the reason why I wouldn't recommend this is because the vertical recoil control, as well as the horizontal recoil control, is so bad that when you use other attachments to balance it out, it's just kind of a waste. Now, of course, with the gun you're using, you don't really need to worry about the recoil then yeah, use it. Like if you're hip firing or for any other reason, the cons don't really affect your weapon, I'd say use it. But for the most part, you would not really use this CHF barrel. But it is something to keep in mind if you're using a particular weapon. Next up, extended mags. You always want the most amount of ammo. No matter what the cons are, you always want to have as much ammo as possible. Next up, you want to head over to the fire mods and make sure to use FMJ. Now the reason why is because there are armored zombies in Black Ops 6, and if you use FMJ rounds, when you try to break their armor, they'll break a lot faster. So having this will actually help you kill more zombies using less bullets. Now you're going to be spending a lot of time making builds for these weapons because here's something you can do. You can set the builds you make as a zombie build. In other words, when you get into the game and you want to buy a weapon off the wall, if that weapon has a zombie build that you made, it'll have all the attachments that you put on it. So you can make every weapon that's on the map as effective and as great as you possibly can. Now the next important topic, in my opinion, are the perks. There are three different perks that to me are at least new. First one being Melee Macchiato, which replaces your weapon gun butt with a deadly punch. Next up we have PhD Flopper, which allows you to dive and create an explosion. This also stops you from dealing explosive damage to yourself, which later is going to be very useful. Next up is Elemental Pop. When you drink this, any attack you do can trigger a random ammo mod. Now moving on to weapon mods, there are five of them. And picking the right one is actually very important. The reason why it's so important is because each mod can deal more damage to different types of zombies. For example, the Mangler, which is a big armored guy, he takes more damage from the Napalm weapon mod. Next we have the Abomination, which is a three-headed, like, little animal. Actually, there's nothing little about him, he's quite huge. This thing takes more damage from Napalm and Brain Rot. Next up we have the Amalgam, which is my least favorite one. This thing takes more damage from Deadwire and Shadow Rift. And now lastly for the little guys, the Parasites, which are the flying little wasps, and then the Vermin, which are the spiders, these guys take more damage from Cryofreeze. Which, being honest, isn't all that useful since you can pretty much kill these things very quickly, so getting Cryofreeze is kind of a waste. And a quick tip about the Mangler, he has this attack where he'll shoot this kind of energy wave at you with this gun. Now when he lifts this gun up to shoot you, if you shoot at the yellow end of it, like the barrel of it, you'll cancel his attack. And if you do it three times, he'll drop the mangler weapon that you can pick up and use. And just some basic info, if you shoot his helmet off, you'll be able to deal more damage, but he'll also start running at you. Now next up we have the Abomination. A quick tip about this thing is that when it opens its mouth and you throw a grenade in it, you'll deal a lot of damage and destroy one of the mouths. Do this with the other two and you'll kill it instantly. This is a way that you can kill this thing without even shooting one bullet. Now getting to the weapons you should use, I'm going to give you the main three that I would usually use. I'm not going to go into details about the classes, I'll make another video about that. But the main ones you should be using are the ASG-89, the shotgun. The reason why is that this thing can absolutely obliterate hordes of zombies. If you pack punch it, this thing is amazing 
It'll help you get to high rounds. And you can pretty much buy it on both the maps off the wall, so it's easily accessible. Next up is the GS45. This one's really good, mainly because you can find this in Liberty Falls in the spawn area, so it's easily accessible. Now the main reason why this thing is really good is that when you pack punch it, you get explosive rounds. And if you have them akimboed, you'll be able to get through any kind of round without much hassle. Like this thing is what you would use to get to higher rounds, 50, 30, whatever. So if you want a quick and easy way to play the game, use the GS45. Now next up is the LR 7.62. This thing is kind of the same deal. When you pack punch it, it deals explosive damage. It has explosive rounds, in other words. But the reason why I'd recommend this is that when you aim for the head, it deals a lot of damage. So this thing is mainly good for bosses, like the manglers, the abominations, the big guys. Now there are a lot of great guns, but I'll make a separate video about that. But for now, the main three that I would use are these. And a very useful tip for the last two, the explosive ones, make sure to get PhD Flopper, since this will negate all explosive damage you deal to yourself. So you can pretty much shoot the ground if you're cornered and kill the zombies without killing yourself. Now getting into when you spawn into the maps, real close by you'll find a Rampage Inducer, which can help you speed up the rounds, make the zombies quicker, and pretty much help you get through the rounds quicker if you're just not really in the mood to take things slow. You can also deactivate it, so that's also a pretty cool little feature. And another thing that many people may not know is that you can change your field upgrade and your gobblegum set mid-game. So while you're playing, you don't like the field upgrade, you can change it right away. And if you have multiple gobblegum sets, you can switch between them. So you can pretty much have access to all your gobblegums while playing the game. And while we're on the topic of gobblegums, you can actually have three of them ready to be used. So in other words, you can get a gobblegum, not use it, get another one, not use that one either, and then get another one and have three of them ready to use. And you can pick between them. But do keep in mind, you cannot replace one. So if you get one, you're going to have to use it before you can get another one. Oh, and if you have double XP tokens, you can also activate these in the middle of the game. I recommend waiting till later rounds to activate them, just so you can get the best out of them, whether they're double XP boosters or double weapon XP boosters. Now, another thing I've noticed when playing is that people tend to reload when they find a max ammo. The max ammo now not only replenishes the ammo that you can hold, but also the ammo in your gun. So there's no need to reload, and there's no need to tell your friends to reload that you found a max ammo. And I also think that enemies who are downed also get the max ammo. But I'm not exactly sure since I don't really go down because I'm actually a decent player. So don't quote me on that. And another tip is that when you're using the mystery box, if you get a weapon that you don't want, but your friend does, you can melee the box and it'll glow like kind of this green fog, whatever, meaning that any of your friends can pick it up. Now moving on to your weapon's damage, there are two ways you can actually increase the damage. One obviously is by pack-a-punching, and two is by upgrading its rarity. Now there are multiple ways you can upgrade the rarity. You can head over to one of these stations and upgrade it using salvage, or you can do SAM trials, which are challenges that can reward you with a weapon upgrade. They also reward you with a pack-a-punch, so keep that in mind. And the higher the rarity, the more damage you'll deal. Now pack-a-punching, you can only do it three times, or three times for each weapon anyways. The first one will cost you 5,000, the second pack a punch will cost you 15,000, and then the third one will be 30,000. This will upgrade the damage and it won't just be a waste. You can also do this with your melee weapon. All you need to do is pull out your melee weapon on PS5 or PS4, or console in other words. You have to hold down the melee button and you'll pull out the melee weapon you have, whether that's a drill, a baseball bat, or a knife. You can head over to a station and upgrade its rarity. You can then pack a punch it three times and also get melee macchiato. And with that combination, your melee weapon will continue to one shot or one hit kill a lot of zombies for a lot longer rounds. So it's a pretty cool thing to have. Now another tip is that the wall buys, their rarity also increases after every five rounds that I've noticed. Now I'm not sure exactly how it works, like what's the step-by-step -step or the order that they upgrade in, but to me it's been kind of random. So just a tip, every five rounds, make sure you wait if you're thinking about buying a weapon off the wall because it could actually change in rarity and be better. Now here are a couple of tricks that you can do to get some easy points. First one is going prone next to the perk machines. When you do this, you'll get loose change for a hundred. Next, if you find a pool table, shoot the pool balls and they'll all go in, giving you a hundred points. Now if you head over to one of these crafting benches, you can actually get some pretty cool stuff. For example, you can buy a monkey bomb, which is way better than a decoy. It lasts longer and creates an explosion. You can also buy this LT-53 Casimir, which creates this kind of black hole that sucks in all the zombies around it. So it is kind of useful. It's very useful, actually. Like, I would use this if I found it anywhere. You can also buy a self-revive kit from one of these things. 
Now that said, if there's any other tips and tricks that you know about that I didn't mention, please let me know in the comment section. And I'll be making two videos for each of the maps, giving you guys like some tips and tricks for those maps, hidden secrets, everything. And if they're already done, I'll make sure to leave them right here in the end screen that you guys can click on and watch. But other than that, I hope you found this useful, and I hope to see you in my next video. Peace.